Why has someone already gotten rid of their brand new driving iron? Because one of my guilty pleasures when in replay golf is finding very unusual builds of equipment and then try and figure out why someone who would have spent upwards of 200 pounds on one club within a year or so decided to get rid of it and obviously trade it in more importantly give you my reasons why i think this club didn't work and hopefully stop you making the same kind of mistakes. This definitely caught my eye when I was in replay golf. We have a 25 degree driving hybrid iron from TaylorMade, the stealth version. Most up to date and I imagine will get replaced next year. And don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of this head design and I'll show you exactly the kind of player that is definitely for. However, this got me thinking, scratching my head, trying to figure out exactly why this person was fitted. And the reason I say fitted is because finding a seniors flex, that's what a flex essentially is, in a driving head style shape, even though it has got a reasonable amount of loft, well, it's very unlikely to find this somewhere on the shelf. And that's probably for good reason. And let me tell you, distance, isn't one of them. The biggest mistake I see so many golfers make when they go for a club fit or trying to get a new club using distance as the only measuring stick. We presume total distance is the end goal. If it goes further than the club that I have at the moment, then surely that means I'm gonna be shooting better scores out on the golf course. And we'll get to this in a minute and why I still think this is a bit of a disaster of a golf club for the person that it probably was built for. And then in the same breath, explain to you guys, this club here could actually be the perfect weapon for you. So let's do some testing. And I have to say, when I catch this, even at a slow club head speed, okay, that wasn't really that slow. 75, that's better. It's gone an incredible distance for this player's club head speeds. But the main thing that we've got to take away from that great shot, that player would have hit in the club fit and gone, sold, I need this 180 yard five iron in my hands, is that we're not really taking into the consideration well, the bad ones. So we're gonna do a few tests, talking about launch and spin, not just for the good shot, because out of these two now, I can tell you which one will go further, but on average, considering that is all the game of golf is, how good is your bad shot? Which one of these will come out on top? Now, I chose the 11 hybrid as well. It was the closest loft and shaft combination I have in the studio to this tailor-made stealth driving hybrid iron and hopefully you get to see the difference between these two clubs and why one of them will benefit more in certain areas and why the other one will then dominate in the others. So we're going to do three tests with the first two being at 75 miles an hour club head speed. The reason I'm choosing that is because I presume someone that's been fitted with an A-flex shaft max out his five iron at around that speed. The last test, I will go faster, however, and then show you why I think this combination actually will be really beneficial for some of you. Because there's no such thing realistically as a wrong combination. There's no such thing as a disastrous golf club, just potentially the wrong combination for that particular player. That being said, at 75 miles an hour, I would question this kind of loft with this kind of head style. But obviously that's what we're going to test now. Right, five swings, 75 miles an hour, and I'll mention the strikes with each one as that's so important for this test. That's got to be good. 75.9, better. 76, and half decent strike out in the middle of that. Blocked out to the right. For a blocked out to the right shot, that's already quite low. I should also mention test one, not steep and slightly on the inside or neutral path. Essentially as good as the impact could be for this particular club. Oh, that is not a good strike. That is out the heel. That was awful, but important to note. Oh, 
Oh, I caught that one very nicely. Tiny bit fast, however. And to be honest, if you were in a fitting and you swung at 77 miles an hour, efficiency through the roof. I mean, club numbers, perfect. That is a driver off the deck and that would instantly sell anyone into this club. Right, this one, we're gonna pull a bit left. There she is. Now, don't get me wrong, no one is trying to play this shot, but let's be honest, it's going to happen. You're gonna double cross it, you're gonna close that club face, the best players in the world do. And look at our spin rate, drop to virtually nothing, meaning our carry's 113, and even though I hit all of those pretty good, we can see the one that we got absolutely perfect. But then when you compare the dispersion for the rest, that's purely because this head type and this shaft is designed for high launch, low spin. It is a Formula One car. Max out to the edge. And when used perfectly, this thing will go further than anything else for that person's club head speed. However, you take that corner a slightly bit late, or potentially a slightly bit early, well, disaster definitely could ensue. So let's go something a bit bigger in head design, a bit more forgiving, especially for those off-center hits. Not to mention, even though this is one degree less lofted, I'd be fascinated to know what the descent angle on this is compared to the tailor-made driving iron. Because that build to me just screams long path threes, screams approach shots into greens. It doesn't strike me as someone using that off the tee. Total distance is all well and good, but if you're slightly downwind and your greens are firm, you want the ball to stop, which is another reason why I just don't feel that club is a good build until the last scenario towards the end. Right, 75 miles an hour. What can we produce? 82. God, this feels a lot lighter already. That's got to be better. 76, good. And interestingly, I caught that quite heavy. The reason I have to mention my strike and how I've hit it is because this is so similar to a lot of your guys' golf game. Because I hit that heavy, which naturally drops your spin. You hit more up into the ball. Club head speed naturally would then drop. Because the head shape and design, not technology, means that we've actually spun it more than we were able to get with the tailor-made stealth. Point is, the tailor-made stealth HD has quite a big bounce, don't get me wrong, compared to most irons, but nowhere near as much as a hybrid or even a fairway would. Okay, maybe that was a bit too heavy. <laughs> like that, for example. I mean, you'll be lucky enough to get that ball to go more than 100 yards. 72, but I duffed it. <laughs> but it's still gone 155 yards. And the spin's almost as good as the tailor made when I struck it well. Oh, I think we've done it. 75.5. Fantastic. Instantly, the spin is dramatically increased. Club head speed the same. Nowhere near as far as the one when we actually caught the same 75 mile an hour out the middle with the tailor made. So we've almost lost, let's say 10 yards. Okay, let's get rid of all the ones that I didn't strike well. So get rid of that one and get rid of that one. Okay, few things to note. Spin evidently with the hybrid, even though it's one degree less lofted, a lot higher meaning that our descent angle is gonna be somewhat higher on the good shot. And interestingly, in terms of carry, apart from one of them that we didn't quite catch, quite similar to the stealth, but the one that I absolutely flushed, which is really important to note, had the ability, because it's so low spinning, and you get it out the middle, and you catch it well, can go 182 yards, with the 11 hybrid, you have not got a chance of getting that kind of distance at that kind of club head speed. However, I would say I hit the 11 hybrid once I took all the awful ones off from the stealth, not as well. I actually hit it probably more at the heel, the toes, probably a reason why I don't like hybrids. Yet on those off center hits, because the spin was that much higher, it had a chance of still staying in the air. Okay, test two, same club head speed, but we're gonna come steep and across it. And I think the point of this whole video, just like I explained there, you could use this for driver fitting. There's one driver that can go 300 yards, can go 250, can go 230. But then what about your bad shots? 
There's no point getting that launch and spin to such a level that if you don't hit it out the middle, it basically just falls out the air. Interestingly, no, as I come across it in steep, I inflate the backspin because this spin loft angle now is so much higher. This is when hopefully you can see how much technique plays a part in obviously launch and spin. Oh, I mean, that was very steep and across it. Right, hybrid turn. Awful strike, horrendous strike. And again, faster, something about this club that just makes me want to swing it faster. I should probably prove at this point, these are the same length. Now, maybe not the fairest of testers, let's be honest, I'm not used to coming across and down at it at this kind of speed. But again, it's pretty safe to presume if someone's steep and across the ball, a lot of bounce on the bottom of the club. Not to mention toe strikes are gonna be very common on this kind of club. Therefore, it's gonna help in terms of forgiveness. The MOI is just bigger, there's just more weight behind it. Therefore, I've almost hit four of those 11 hybrids the same distance now, stealth DHI. And apart from one, which I absolutely flailed out, again, it's pretty safe to presume a hybrid in that player's hand at that kind of club head speed, well, just kind of makes sense. Test three, they'll stop slagging off this combination as it has some use. Of course, we know this does spin low. So who could that help? Who needs low spin? And because they keep hanging out to the right-hand side, would benefit from a very light, high torque shaft that wants to shut that club face through. Well, it's this guy. <laughs> oh, 5,000 worth of backspin. Let's go around 95, maybe a bit lower. Let's go across that golf ball. Let's cut across it. Oh, cut fades for days. Straight on the green, I'm built in at 95 miles an hour now. Let's be honest, at 200 yards, I think all of us are taking that dispersion, especially if you're coming across the ball relatively steep and have a good amount of club head speed. I left that club face open, yet I've only gone 10 yards offline. But just for the same reason this was able to add spin for that slower club head speed player, it's gonna add spin for, well, <laughs> this one too. 94, we're dialed in. Where are we at? 6,199. That's a lot of backspin for a hybrid. When you get off center strikes at high club head speeds, one of the reasons why I can't get on with hybrids is that if you hit this high toe, 93, 94, 95 miles an hour, that's going to launch it higher and drop the spin, meaning that all of a sudden, I could have a 30 yard miss that goes almost 20 to 30 yards further. Not to mention this hybrid does want to spin more on the backspin. And let's be honest, this is the shot I would be looking to play with on the golf course. These would be the good shots, yet they're still just behind the driving iron. The important thing to note is the disparity between the spins, 4,500 being the lowest for the stealth and 5,200. Compared to the hybrid at that speed and that swing, 4,200 being the lowest, all the way up to 6,100 being the highest, meaning at times I almost had a 30 yard distance, 190 all the way up to 220. I think it's really important to know if you're struggling to release the club and you have a decent amount of clubhead speed don't feel like you have to stay within stiff flex just because you swing it fast if you want that club face close and you want more launch and you want more spin aka height go to something a bit softer maybe not a flex but maybe try a reg flex as it's definitely going to help those shots out to the right Guys, if you've got any questions on your golf bag or your golf game, sasgolfacademy.com or I have got online coaching on Skillist. My profile's up here on the right-hand side. Catch you guys later.